Do you really know how to make somebody feel something through your films? Today we're going to be having a conversation about what it looks like to be story minded and if it can level up your work. Storytelling is literally as old as time. Tale as old as time. But as a filmmaker, do you really understand what it means? I have nine, <laughs> nine tips that maybe potentially might be able to help you understand how to storytell. And to be totally honest, I was nervous to even touch on this topic. I mean, there are so many more artists who are way more qualified than I am. You know, you can just look at Sculpting with Time. You you would have every kind. Take a look at neighborhood films. Go. Um, you have J.R. Ali. Uh, Martin Brothers. The list goes on. If you're new here on the channel, I'm Isaac, AKA on Instagram. And my goal for this channel is really to intertwine the topics of faith and creativity for the modern believer, filmmakers being one of them. When you think about film, story has to be the foundation and it's the very being of what makes movies and films what they are. The creator or the inventor of the first motion picture took the old adage of storytelling and just combined it. I mean, just combined it with visuals. He seamlessly created a dreamy concept um, you know, that we can only experience through imagination, you know, up until that point. I remember my aunt always having a story about my dad, them running around when they were younger and just being mischievous. But that's really kind of where she got me, where she wanted to get my attention was she would always say, did I ever tell you about the time? And immediately my attention was caught. But depending on who you learned, uh, on who you learned film from, does the formula start out the same way? In general, film has a six point story, has a six point storyline. You have hook, conflict, initiation, journey, resolution, and jab. There's even some with a five point storyline, three point storyline, I think there's even an eight point storyline. You see, storytelling helps your video flow, your video or your film, and it just helps it make sense. The only video type that I can remember that doesn't really need to follow a general storyline um, would be like trailers, highlight videos, and, and maybe even home videos, right? Whether you're doing travel videos, commercial work, vlogs, uh, live, you know, live events, weddings, you need to have a story. Flow, or also known as cadence, keeps your audience engaged and from being confused or lost when watching. I believe a lot of people getting into this industry, filmmaking that is, are awestruck by the highlights and the film trailer style, you know, type of videos. And they go after that, simply forgetting that story and is really what the viewer will notice more than just the glam and glitter. A mature storyteller can captivate an audience without any FX. I mean, just like look at A Quiet Place, right? And why? Why is this? Because it's human instinct to listen and to be captivated by story. Being a good storyteller in film certainly separates you from the pack and the general masses of videographers. And again, a lot of people get into the industry thinking that gear is really what sets them apart, right? It does make a difference, but storytelling sets you apart. And the very reason why old films are great films, because they're great at stories. And in the business world, there's actually this saying by, uh, I believe it's Maya uh, Angelou. She says, what I've learned is what people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And tell me this isn't true, especially with film. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, be good at FX, right? Capture the crisp looking imagery, but at the end of the day, it's story that will separate you as a filmmaker. So let's just get into some of the tips that I have when it comes to being a better storyteller. I have nine tips, right? Nine tips that could potentially increase your storytelling ability. And if you have learned anything from this, I do ask that you would hit that like button and subscribe. But jumping into number one, we're starting with a popular heavy hitter in the film industry, which is storyboarding. This is simply taking a linear timeline of images that literally represent every camera angle oh. take by take. This not only increases your production speed, but also lays out what your film will look like. 
putting your thoughts down on paper. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I can get something from my head down to paper, I can make way more allocated decisions and tend to have a more clear path. Now, moving on to number two. If you wanna take more of the production company route, clients not only love storyboarding, as it helps them visualize uh, just kind of what the end product's gonna look like, but even before developing a story, you know, developing and storyboarding, this simple little trick actually draws out the client's story and vision for their film. I would have a client story analysis the first meeting to properly articulate the vision, feeling, and action that the client wants their audience to have which helps me pull out the story that they want to tell, but just don't know how to say it and understand what their goals are for their video that we're creating. Now I use this in a B2B scenario, but certainly can this be used anywhere you want to pull story? The story analysis is just a series of questions that can help determine mood, emotion, pace, audience. Coming in at number three. Now this third one is fun, but it is, you know, a little time consuming. Watching films, simply studying films to see if you can understand why the director did what they did without having to listen to a commentary or anything. A learning duck is a smart duck. We will never stop learning. So if you think that you've already know it all, then you've already lost. Films are an easy way, really an easy way to learn and to be entertained. But coming in at number four, this next tip may not be as practical for most visual artists because it is a hands-on technique, but it is gonna help you understand mood, emotion, and story. Algorithm methods. Light and color are big factors, if not the biggest, along with score, when determining the mood or emotion in your film. So for example, work with a model, right? Take a model, take a product, and dress a scene to be vibrant. Then change the lighting to emulate mood, somber, epic, heroic, and play with the lighting or color background to experiment different visual emotions. Can be a little bit more advanced and it may not be practical, but if you do have the capability, time, and resources, then it could be very beneficial to exercise as you open doors to story and convey the proper emotions. Number five, toning things back down to simplicity. The fifth is reading novels. Take note from one of the oldest forms of storytelling as writers notably convey a message with every lick of a pen. Going a step further with tip number six, you can actually write down, write out, your, write out a story yourself. As simple as it is, I would categorize this technique for a more serious project or for fun, like short and feature films. And remember, feature films are 40 minutes or longer, as it may be a little over the top for an entry-level commercial or wedding film, that has you know a shorter turnaround time, although the entry level in commercial wedding films can be certainly effectively can effectively be pre-produced with a mood board or storyboard. Number seven, back in film school, there was a technique that I didn't really understand until I started crafting films myself, which was watch with the sound off, seeing if what you t stitch together has cadence, because if it has story without sound then the sound will only enhance the story and not derail it. You see, this technique can also work with watching your favorite feature film, you know, with the sound off and, and really any project at that matter. Number eight, in reverse, listen to audio only from a film. Remember, you're trying to develop your skills for storytelling. This technique is most effective with films that you haven't seen before, even audiobooks. I mean, audio and other story format podcasts like Business Wars, uh, Adventures in Odyssey, The Secrets, uh, The Secret to Victory by Gatorade uh, and Gimmick Creative have great sound design and are, and are intentional to draw you in through audio atmosphere. Keep in mind that these some of these techniques won't be for you. Some of them will work, some of them won't, and then you're gonna find that others are gonna be a lot more effective. But coming in at number nine, which I know can seem very obvious, but enroll in a course like Muse Storytelling, which is a widely accoladed production company who teaches you the art of storytelling. This enrollment from last story member is limited and comes with a price that most artists may not be willing to pay, but can be the most effective way to increase your storytelling skills. Remember, it's an art form, and an art form in and of itself should not be rushed. Sure, there may be some techniques that you can instantly enhance your films with, but when it comes down to being creative, I mean, no one can really teach you this because creativity comes from the inside. Like a muscle, if you don't exercise it, you won't increase its strength. 
which I've actually covered in another video called why 80% of artists fail. And you can check that out. You can check that out in the description below if you like. So did any of these tips stand out to you? If they did, let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts, what you thought about this and kind of if it did help you out. And if you did find value in this video, I do ask that you would hit that like button and subscribe so that way you can stay updated on the latest for faith and creativity. But that's all I have for today. So until next time, ciao.